What up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Today we're going to talk about hash functions. You may have heard of hash functions from cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether. They're used in file comparisons. They're used in cryptography like passwords. They're used all over the place for file checksums, blah, blah, blah. What we're going to cover today is give you an example of how they're useful from a password perspective and showing how they're useful from showing that files are modified. What are hash functions? Well, hash functions are a function that takes in an arbitrary string, so cow or the contents of a book, and gives you a fixed length string. If I put in cow, it's always 64 characters long of weird letters and numbers, random. If I put in a book, I'm still gonna get a random set of numbers and letters that's 64 character bits in length. The good news is it's deterministic or a pure function. If I put in cow, I'm always gonna get the exact same result out every single time. That string will look the same. The file comes useful because you can tell somebody modified it. So that string is slightly different. So instead of sending the entire file right over the internet, you can just send that teensy little string and say, yep, it's been modified. The other nice thing about them is that it's reasonably unfeasible reverse that message back to what it originally was. So if you put your password in, it's very unlikely, not impossible, to find that original value that you put in or values. But let's show you some examples in code and you see what hashes do and what they're good for. Now I'm going to show you some code in JavaScript. You can do this in many, many different languages. I'm just going to use JavaScript because that's what I'm most familiar with. Works in the browser and in Node. We're going to use the default crypto library that's included with Node. We're going to use one of the many algorithms. There's a lot of different hashing algorithms that have been created throughout the years, both by the security community, by other mathematicians, by companies, a lot of different people have all collaborated on these cool things. Create a function here called hash256 that takes some random string, whatever you type in, and we're going to create a hash function using this algorithm, and we're going to update it. And that means, all right, put this string that I gave you in there, and then give me the hex version out of it. This digest is kind of what hashes it or makes it random and gives you that random thing back. Go ahead and put cow in there first and watch what happens when we hash cow. Node password, you can see I get the 64 character length string even with just three characters. If I call it again, it's just, you can see it's deterministic or pure function. Same input, same output. So always the same thing. If we add, let's say, moo, another three character thing that's lowercase all letters that will get a completely different hash for cow and moo. Same for both of them each time, so they're also both deterministic. And it doesn't matter the length of it. If we put something even longer than 64, if I just keep typing you know, random things and hit save, no matter how long the input, it'll give you the same unique output. Now let's show you something a little bit bigger. I have a blog post here that is about 300 lines long, a couple thousand words. It's from my blog, jessieward.com. And so it's a lot longer than what I just typed over here. And so we're going to add one additional function here that takes the file name of that file, reads it in the contents of it, the, the big old string I just showed you. And we're going to hash that. So we're going to take the contents and then hash that and see what happens. There's thousands and thousands of characters here. We'll say node file modified. And you can see the blog post gets, yet again, a 64 character length hash. And it's unique and it's also deterministic. Same file, same input. But what if you modify the file? Let's go ahead and modify it here. We'll say, yeah, hit save rerun it, and you can see the hash is very, very different, search of 4.3, very, very different random. These won't collide for the most part. So if you send in any password or any file, you're always going to get a unique hash out. For the most part, you don't have collisions where these things are the same for two different inputs. That almost never happens. You don't have to worry about it. It's infeasible, not impossible, that they could reverse engineer. And that's why it's useful for passwords, because they can't derive your password from this big old string very easily. And the same thing with the file modified. It's very difficult to go from this to that gigantic novel that we <laughs> that I wrote in my blog that we pasted in here. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is hash functions. They are used for a variety of different things. The one I showed you today, which is the 256 SHA, it gives you a 64 character length string. Regardless of if you give it a three character string or a thousand character string, you always get the same length string out and it's always random numbers and letters that you can use to protect passwords or compare files. A lot of other different uses for it.